Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. This video is my long-term review of my Shubeth E1 helmet. Now I haven't done many gear reviews before and that's mainly because I think they work best when it's a comparison. So if you can get five or six products that are the same or in the same sort of segment and look at how they differ between them. I think to really know if they're any good or not, you really have to use them and use them for a while. So that's difficult to do with a lot of products. So I'm not going to do that. There's plenty of magazines that can do that and people can use the internet. You can look up, see what the manufacturers say about them and what other people uh, have thought of the particular ones. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about a few things that I have had for a while that I have used and hopefully I've worked out what's good about them and maybe what's not so good. So the first one I'm going to talk about is this Shubeth E1. So I paid about £400 for this in the UK three years ago and in that time I've done about 15,000 miles, I think, wearing it. So that's across Europe, that's two trips down to the Balkans, it's my, my lap of Ireland, and also just for riding around the UK. I also use it as my dual sport helmet when I'm riding my CRF, uh, for which it's okay, uh, seems to have done all right. Uh, probably not huge mileage, uh, but I am, I think, using it for both on-road uh, and trail riding, uh, which is maybe what it was designed for with this, with this peak. So a few other things about it. Uh, Shubeth helmets fit my head, so ultimately, if your head shape does not fit you with helmets, then this probably won't be great for you. Uh, and equally, you're probably wearing helmets that don't fit my head particularly well. So wherever possible, if you can, try a helmet on before you buy it, especially if you've not had one from that manufacturer before. So a few things about it. So a uh, quick overview. It is the same as their C3 Pro uh, flip-up helmet. So as you can hopefully see it from there, that comes up. The peak actually slides up with it. It's compatible with their SRC Pro Bluetooth system. And if you get that, you get some fancy little buttons underneath to control it. Now for me, because I run a couple of helmets at the same time, um, and I don't particularly want to buy lots of expensive Bluetooth systems, uh, I've just got my Senna 30K and I just buy a new fitting kit for each one. Uh, and on this one, um, I've actually put it in. Uh, it's actually on the stick-on pad on the side of the helmet. It seems to work really well. This bit here was actually too thick uh, to use the clamp, which is why I'm using the stick-on. Uh, but it I've got the boom mic that comes out. That works quite well. It's not the official Shubeth one, but it means I can use one Bluetooth unit with several different helmets. It's got a ratchet chin strap, which seems to work pretty well, easy to get on and off. Mine's never come loose and it's got enough adjustment in there. Um, it also has a built-in sun visor, which you can see on there. That seems to still be working on mine after three years of use and abuse. And then it has this peak on the top. Now I've heard some people complain about the peak on the top saying it flaps around quite a lot or is noisy. I really haven't found that. And if you can see on that camera, um, that it's actually quite, you know, there's not a great deal of space that's actually into the wind. There's not a lot for it to catch. Now, I suppose if you put your head all the way back or a long way forward, maybe it would be more of a problem. But for me, that has always been fine. There's a big chin vent, easily enough, open and closed. There's another one to direct uh, air over the visor, and then there's a few vents in the top. So there is absolutely nothing uh, on the back of the helmet, so any, any air that comes through uh, has to find another way out. Good things. Uh, for me, I find it really comfortable. Like I said, it fits my head shape from the moment I put it on until now. Uh, it's extremely comfortable to wear, even if I'm wearing it all day. The second thing, and this is perhaps the biggest thing about it, it's quiet. I mean, it's really quiet. Bearing in mind, this is a modular helmet with lots and lots of places where air could get in around the sides uh, when you're riding it. And I ride this on my GS, even if I'm doing long tours. And it is really quiet. You know, I can have my volume on my Bluetooth pretty low. The noise fatigue is minimized. Um, I generally wear earplugs with it, but I don't have to. Uh, and I can really tell the difference when I go back to a noisier helmet uh, and I'm out riding. The visibility on it's really good. Uh, if you can see here, you, you do get quite a big aperture, uh, which is great from a visibility point of view. It's not great for everything, which I'll come to in a moment. And the peak. Now, I suppose peaks, it's something which, I guess it's a popular thing on motocross helmets and also on dual sport helmets. Uh, I suppose if you're actually looking at a helmet like this, you probably want that. And it's quite nice when you get that, you know, that sun that's uh, just dipping towards the horizon. Uh, a bit like in a car where you'd, you'd flip down the, the sun visor. And with this, you can just tilt your head a bit and you can still get, get a view of the road ahead. Things that aren't so great, the ventilation I've found is fine for the UK. We don't really have hot summers. We do tend to have damp and cooler winters. And for that, I think it's fine. When I've been riding in hotter places, especially above 30 degrees Celsius, I've found it to be too warm. Now other people I've seen have said they think it's fine up to 
100 Fahrenheit, which I guess is 37. I'll be honest, I struggled with it at those sorts of temperatures. I had to ride uh, with the visor open a little bit just to get enough, enough airflow through uh, to keep me cool. But I do most of my riding in the UK uh, and it was certainly warm enough to wear through the winter uh, over here. And those occasions where I do go abroad, you know, I suppose it's one of those things you get a lot of venting, so it's great in hot weather, but then it's cold in cold weather. And for me, this, the, the amount of cooling it does is good enough uh, for what I need. Next thing is the internal sun visor, which I think is brilliant. You know, it's lots of helmets have them. The mechanism still works up and down, it's pretty easy. And it's just really useful. And I found it, especially when I've been in Europe, going in and out of tunnels, where you go from very bright sunshine outside into the dark and then back again, that it's it's just great to have it there. You know, I know you can get interchangeable visors on other helmets, but then you have to carry the dark one, you have to swap them over. If you, you know, they're not great for switching just when you're when, when you're coming and going. So I'm now going to talk about a few things which I think could be improved on the helmet. So one of them is, as I've said, the ventilation. I mean, it's okay for the UK, but for hotter weather, I think they could do more. The next thing is, is how the visor closes. Now I'll, I'll put it up next to the GoPro and maybe you can see that. There is just this little tab on the front there and it's easy enough to do now just to get that to close. But when you're actually wearing it, you have to pull it down quite hard to get that to close and the visor flexes quite a lot. So that's not ideal. I mean, I can generally do it one-handed, but sometimes, you know, I have to really push it from the top. The downside with that as well is because there is this flex in this bottom area and because the visor is so big, it does have a pin lock insert in it. But I find that actually it does fog up a bit as a result, especially in cold weather and damp weather uh, here in the UK. Uh, and the last thing which I'm not a huge fan of is the weight. So this one is a extra large, so it's a size 61, and it says the weight is 1,845 grams plus or minus 50 grams. So when you add to that the weight of the Bluetooth, and if I put a GoPro uh, on the front as well, you know, it's getting up above two kilos which, okay, it's a helmet with the extra things on, a lot of them are gonna get heavier, but I think two kilos is almost too heavy. You know, I know that there are some other dual sport helmets out there, especially those with a carbon shell, which weigh in at maybe as much as half a kilo less than this. So I think when it comes to replacing it, that's probably what I'm gonna be looking at just to try and save a bit of that weight. Uh, and especially when I've got a camera mounted on it, you know, anything that just reduces the amount of weight on your head, uh, on your neck and shoulders, especially after a long day, I think makes a difference. So in conclusion, uh, if you have a shoe with shaped head, which I do, um, it's a really comfortable helmet. It is really, really quiet. I think it's it's a dual sport helmet, but it's definitely more at the road end of dual sport rather than being an out and out off-road helmet. Uh, you know, there's motocross, motocross helmets that work better with goggles exactly for that purpose, or even some dual sport helmets which are more off-road orientated. So this is very much the road end of, of, of that spectrum. I think it's perfect amount of venting for cooler climbs. I don't think it vents enough for warmer places, you know, hot weather. And I guess one, one bonus now is that it's been out for a few years. Uh, they are available from discount places. And I think you can pick them up for around 250 and 300 pounds. So, you know, just over half what I paid for it. So I think at that price, it is a bargain. You know, if you're looking for a mostly road with some off-road use helmet with a peak, with an internal sun visor that is a flip up, then I think you could do a lot worse uh, than this. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I don't know if I'd replace it like for like, I'd certainly look for something a bit lighter, but otherwise all the other attributes about it I think have been really good. I'm not sure whether I would get a helmet that's as quiet and as comfortable as this if I did go for something lighter, but I'm sure I'll find out in the future. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting and useful. If it has, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.